Hey guys, so it's come to my attention that a lot of you don't know what happened to the 90 series. Uh, so I hope this video uh, opens your eyes on safety on four-wheel driving. And um, yeah, I'll explain the events of, uh, leading up to it, etc, etc. So, so what happened was I was planning a four-week solo camping trip over in the Victorian high country. Um, Going to be a heap of content. That was the plan anyway. So I left on a Thursday and on my way over Thursday, left on Thursday, can't remember now, left on a Friday actually. So I got the car finished on the Thursday because I put a torque converter lock up kit in it and a Nomad valve body from wholesale automatic transmissions, which I never even got to test. But I did that um, on the Friday I left, Friday night I stayed at a caravan park at a small township on the way over, which I can't remember what it was the township name was but stayed there on a Saturday I arrived into uh, Mansfield I've been chatting with a guy on the Victorian high country four wheel drivers group on Facebook and he let me stay on his property so, so that was the plan there um, so I stayed in his property on the Saturday on the Sunday we decided to go up and do a bit of four wheel driving and he showed me around the uh, did a little bit of a Ned Kelly tour actually um, in his 75 series, did a bit of bush bashing up the track. And then the Monday um, we left, we were gonna head up to one of the huts. Um, wasn't Craig's hut, but it was another one on the way through. So that was on the Halford Hills track. So filled up in Mansfield, 212 liters of fuel. Um, so I was fully loaded. On my way out, we stopped at Fry's hut, which is the Fry's hut video which I will put a card up here if you want to check that one out. So that's where it all started. So I did the Fry's Hut video. Right, did a little bit of a tour through there, checked out the river, and then we were on our way up to uh, this, this hut. I can't remember what the hut name was now. So on the way up to that hut, um, just past Tunnel Bend, and Brett's jumped on the radio. He's like, oncoming cars. I'm like, okay. So, and it was just, it was, that quick um i was halfway through a corner and there was a blue patrol wagon and a white patrol called cab ute with a black tray back and a dog box on the back and they flew past and the patrol was in my lane mid corner so i've had to move over to avoid a head-on and as i'd exited the corner the road verge gave way because he'd forced me over that side of the road and i rolled down a ravine six to eight times so I was hanging on for dear life. Um, everything was in slow motion. Just watching everything cave in around me. Um, yeah, it was a very slow motion ride in my eyes. I still remember it vividly. Watch the windscreen crack, everything flying off the window. My phone disappeared, my tablet disappeared. Um, then I came to a stop. Um, I grabbed my, the engine started revving like so I've reached up and I've keyed off the ignition. Now, in keying off the ignition with my adrenaline and the pumping, didn't realize that I couldn't move my shoulder. So I'd stopped. Um, I'm like, well, what do I do? I grabbed the UHF, I had no power. Um, my Garmin inReach was right next to my head, surprisingly. So I grabbed that and I fumbled and I hit the SOS on it because I had, did have that turned on. So, uh, in the meantime of that happening, I um, heard Brett come past and he yelled out at me. He's like, Mick, Mick. I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. I said, I can't move my shoulder. He's like, all right, I'm going to get help. So, he went back down to uh, Fry's Hut and grabbed a couple of guys up camping down there and brought them back up to uh, help me out. So, He'd come down and he was trying to rip out the windscreen. So I'd had a brand new thermal jacket I bought. Um, I'm like, here man, try and rip it out with this. And I said, give me a sec. Found my beanie, which was next to my head as well. Covered my face so I didn't get a glass in my eyes. Because at this time my glasses had disappeared. So um, as most of you know, I do wear glasses. So I didn't have glasses, I couldn't see shit. Um, so he's trying to rip the windscreen out and it just wasn't working. I'm like, man, he said, how much room is there on the passenger side window? Because I was laying passenger side down at this point. Um, 
And he's like, yeah, you can get out there. And I said, well, I reckon I can swing my legs around. He goes, like, obviously we asked if anything hurt. I'm like, no, I said, I feel all right. So I um, undid my seatbelt because I was still in my seatbelt, swung my legs around and uh, popped out through the passenger side window. And that time he just grabbed my arm, uh, my left arm and dragged me up the hill. Got to the back of his ute, I think it was. Yeah, it was his ute. Um, sat down the tailgate. By this time I've started going pale white. Um, and my arm pain has started kicking in immensely. So, um, what's happened then? One of the guys knew a bit of first aid, he put me in a sling. Um, by that time, I still hadn't got an SOS signal on my Garmin. So I'm like, dude, I said, just take me to the hospital. So, hopped in his ute and uh, he took me to the hospital. So, probably about 45 minutes later, I got signal. Um, obviously, my emergency contacts my mum. And she got a call from the US from Search and Rescue saying there's been an incident, we don't know what it is. Um, and we'll, we'll let you know. And obviously, she's tried sitting there trying to call my phone, my phone's not being answered, so she's panicking and in tears. And yeah, it's just full on epic um, mission. At this point, when I got signal, I called her and I said, Look, I said, I've hit the SOS, I'm all right, I'm on my way to hospital, I rolled the car. Um, I said, I'll let you know more when I know more. So in that time, I'm trying to cancel the SOS because they're trying to get a lock on me because they told her they couldn't get a lock on me because my signal kept moving because obviously we're in the car driving. Um, and I don't think I would have got a signal if I was solo. I reckon I would have been down there for quite a long time. So just so you guys know, if you're going to get something like a Garmin inReach, um, it's situational. If you've got bad weather, you're down in a ravine. Um, it's going to be very hard to get signal. Um, you're going to need to get the high ground for that to trigger. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened there. So, yeah, I got to the hospital. Um, they've taken me in, and then my pain started ramping up for like an 8 out of 10 to 10 out of 10. So, they've given me drugs. Um, eventually, I had some ketamine. And. Um, yeah, that was a wild ride having that ketamine. So um, ketamine made my vision um, go all blurry, made my ears ring, everything went distorted. Um, it helped the pain for a little bit. So I was trying to reset my arm because I'd uh, cause obviously I couldn't move it and it was dislocated. So they thought. So yeah, they're trying to put my arm back in. Didn't work. They cut my clothes off at this time. Um, and yeah, I got transferred from Mansfield Hospital to Wangaratta Hospital. And then when I got there, um, they put me in a full neck brace, took me in for a CAT scan to make sure I didn't have a broken back or anything like that. And I was all good. So um, I come out of it with a broken shoulder. Um, and that required a bit of surgery. So, um, so I was sitting in the hospital, waiting, waiting, waiting. I was sitting there with dislocate. They tried, I think, they tried to put it in at Mansfield, which didn't work. They tried again at Wangaratta when I got in, that didn't work. Um, then they knocked me out, tried a third time, wouldn't go in. So then it was open surgery to, to fix everything. So um, what happened is I'd fractured my scapula at the back here, I believe. And um, like the impact was so hard, it chipped a piece of my glenoid off, which is the uh, socket that your arm sits in. And um, I would impacted my humerus and fractured that. So that required a bone graft and some screws. So I've got two screws in my shoulder now. So um, that's all good fun. But yeah, in the hospital, I had to wait four days before I could get into surgery because the doctor had had his COVID shot and he was feeling under the weather. Doctor, surgeon, same dude. So, um, so I had my surgery on the Friday. By this time, a mate of mine I hadn't spoken to for a long time called me. He said, I'm coming over from Adelaide to pick you up. I'm like, well, dude, they don't have the car out yet. It's like, it took them a week to get the car out of the ravine. Um, they had to get road closures um, from one of the departments over there and a heavy tow vehicle and another tow vehicle to pull it out. So. Few thanks to Mount Bullet Towing for uh, recovering the 90. Um, I appreciate it a lot. Um, yeah, so from there, 
Um, it was just a waiting game, really. So I think it was the Monday, the following Monday, they took it out uh, of the ravine. And then the Tuesday morning, um, I could go down and recover my gear from it. So it took quite a bit of the time and I discharged from the hospital the following day of, so after surgery. So I had my surgery and then I was out. So, so yeah, we holed up in Mansfield for a few days until uh, they got the car and then went down and recovered everything I could out of it. Um, all my belongings, all my tools, all my camping gear. Um, someone did steal my swag and stretcher, which I'm still pretty annoyed about, but that has since been replaced through insurance. So, but yeah, there's a lot of things on that vehicle that I wasn't covered for as well. So this is a big warning to you guys. But if you do mods, get your car insured and make sure you list them on your policy, even if it's gonna cost you a little bit more. At the end of the day, you can't replace those things, especially my suspension setup. You can't buy that, couldn't be replaced. Um, someone, I think there's a wrecking yard over in Vic, picked the car up for about 1200 bucks from auction. And yeah, they stripped it and cubed it and she's now long gone. But yeah, someone got the suspension. And um, one of the subscribers, picked up my bull bar and spotties and his son picked up my winch so I happen to have the winch controller in all my stuff so I posted that over to him so shout out there to Dirty GQ um, hope the winch does you well I only used it once and that was just to spool it and that was it so so that's the story guys um, play it safe on the tracks slow down it's not a racetrack you're gonna hurt people um, I could not be here right now. Um, I was told by authorities that I shouldn't have walked away from that. Um, another 40 metres and I would have been in a river had I not gone through a tree and the tree roots had stopped the car. So uh, that's just a little bit of a warning guys to uh, slow, yeah, slow down on the tracks and look out for each other. You know, you're in no rush, you're in a four wheel drive. It's not a racetrack, simple as that. So. Anyway guys, thought I'd do this little bit of an update and uh, hopefully that answers some questions on what happened. Let's take it easy and I'll catch you next time.